There we go. I think that's it. <laughs> a little bit of audio trouble, just par for the course, I guess. Just saying hi to everybody. Hi, Emma. Hi, Michael. Hi, Pippi Pop. How you doing, Keith? Hello, Kelly. Tugboat. <laughs> this is not the place to go for uh, Magic the Gathering pointers, unfortunately. Hey, Michael. I have tried, hey ED, I've tried playing um, Magic the Gathering a couple times and every single time um, I come away not knowing how, how we actually just played anything. Hello Dylan. Oh nice, I'm glad to have you. So I got a couple things to show off actually before I get started on sketches. These came in recently and um, they're so gorgeous I wanted to show them off. These are the um, Brazilian editions of Harrow County of volumes 5 and 6. And they do such a good job. Dark Side is the uh, Brazilian publisher. And just look at how beautiful these are. And they have these great, like, bloody marble end papers. Oof. Condaldo Maldito. Yeah, then they're just beautiful. They're hardcover. They've done the whole series. I think I think they have two more to go. I think these are just the most recent ones. I think they're doing seven and eight um, this year or next year. But um, man, they're just like knocking it out of the park with these books. They're so gorgeous. So if you can read Portuguese um, or, you, or you live in Brazil, go get them. <laughs> so that oh you know what I didn't know if I was going to show this but since we're showing pretty books these are something I made a long time ago and I recently pulled them out have I ever showed you these guys the Witchfinder books that I bound. I don't know if you can see the eel on there very good. But I handmade these um, from the Witchfinder comic. A little sketch in there. Like this is all a little hand lettered credits page to go in there and then I just took the um, you know the floppies and sewed them up into a book and I think this is probably the prettiest book I ever bound I think it turned out really good it's not perfect there's a lot of glue overspill and stuff but um, yeah, I'm really proud of this. I haven't done any book binding in a long, long time. So um, my uh, my YouTube algorithm recently started showing me book binding stuff. And I'm like, oh, I need to look at my some of the books that I bound. And um, this is a good one. I could have gotten better end papers for this. This sort of like gray. It's got a little bit of the fiber texture in there. But... Um, Could have done something a little bit better but I really love the slip case goes in there real good and then the other one this is the same the same four issues but a different style box still got a little bit of a embossed 
W on there. And this one, I tried to make it look like um, there were eels underneath the cover. So the box is still really pretty. But unfortunately, like the way I did it, you can kind of see the whole book is like warped. And I don't know if I could ever undo that with with just the way I glued the stuff. If I remember, I made these out of Super Sculpey and then just glued them to the, the book board. Another guy in there. And these black end papers look pretty good, but the stitching looks kind of nasty. So anyway, this, this was something I was looking at recently and thought was really cool. It's even got a little head, headbands on there. Oh, thanks, Michael. Yeah, I, um, thanks, Emma. I, I want to kind of, thinking about starting to try to bind some of my, um, my collection. I've thought a lot about sending them out to have them done, but I'm kind of like, thinking I could do my own thing and it might be fun anyway I thought that was kind of fun so tonight the the thing I wanted to work on was um, these guys my um, some of the magic the gathering cards I did and um, I get people kind of asking me regularly about getting these because these are the artist proofs, so they're just black blank on the back. And I get people that ask me kind of regularly if they can buy them, and I'm always like, I don't know how to price them, but we're gonna figure it out. And uh, and so, but I also wanted to have uh, an example to put on my website of doing a a sketch back on these guys and this is so this is the um, the card as you play it it's a double side card and so um, I was gonna do a thing where I take these two cards and match them together and do a single sketch across um, I think that would be fun seems like a neat thing I've tried a couple book binding techniques and it didn't end up good, but I'm willing to try it out again. Yeah, Dylan, man, the first batch of books that I ever did it turned out terrible. I think, um, like, I'm no book binding master or nothing, but uh, my um, my uh, plan has always been to uh, like start off doing um, just using printer paper and like sketchbook backs and stuff like that like low cost materials and sort of get a system down and then um and then started buying better stuff i think that's the way to go i could never sell my artist proofs yeah i don't know how many i will sell you know it's like i'm not a big um mtg artist or nothing but i do get a regular series of emails like probably one a month and um, I've been really bad at replying to people because I'm always just like I'm gonna hold off and figure out how to price everything and and sell it right and then I never do but that's the project for this weekend is figuring that out um, and I don't know I think I've showed off my magic cards one at a time but here's like Here's my whole set. We got Graveyard Trespasser and Graveyard Glutton, regular and foil. We got Catilda Donhart Prime, regular and foil. We got Sten, the Paranoid Partisan. That was my first one I ever... No, no, it wasn't. This was my first one I ever did. Was Sereth the Viper's Fang. 
and then Valduk, Keeper of the Flame. But, like, <laughs> frustratingly, these are the only two that I've ever gotten that are um, actual cards. I've gone looking. I need to just um, go shopping for them and buy copies. When you do, like, a magic card, they send you a whole um, box. And um, out of, like... The four or five boxes I've gotten so far, um, I've only gotten these two cards out of those. Those are mine. So the first thing I got to figure out is here's a little blank card. I'm gonna do some ink tests to see how to um, see if my ink that I usually work that I usually use will work on this. Oh, thanks, Poopy Pop. We actually got, um, Maude has a good friend who's helping us figure out some of the pricing stuff. I've never played MG, but I saw it how it's Scorm Sire at Walmart. I had to get it because. Oh, yeah. You know, the, um, I was kind of the same way. I have still, I played, like I said earlier, I played a few times and not figured it out, but I had a, um, oh, I can't remember the name of the card. Somewhere along the line, I came across a, a magic card that had um, these three figures. It was like a skeleton eating a muscle man, eating a, a, like a skinned man, eating the skeleton like in a circle. And I was like, that's the most hardcore thing I've ever seen. And I carried that with me for a long time because it was just so rad. I'm curious for the foreign editions of Harrow County where they translate the title and have to redo that portion of each issue opening spread. Have any of them added the something into Harrow County number 20? Oh, you know what? None of them that I know of have ever added the uh, missing title in into number 20. Um, it'd be really funny if they did. I've been very tempted in um, like reprints and stuff to find a way to, to change that, but um, I've never like had the, <laughs> had the time or energy, I guess, to do it. Also, I kind of, um, it's like a, it, it sort of plays like a, a trivia question. It's like, which one did I totally mess up? Number 20. Okay, so I usually pencil with my red pencil. So let's see how that works. You see that skull at all? I really wanted the Yu-Gi-Oh on deck, but I had a large print of
Alright, I'm going to try to tape this guy down. So these cards all have a coating on them, so I'm pretty confident that watercolor won't work on these. But I'm gonna try some acrylic ink. And I'm gonna try some different washes of that too. And see how see how those work. Hat, sorry. So I want some of my dinosaur stickers. <laughs> nice. So. Oh, the Johan Krauss card you gave me back in 2012. Jesus Christ. So long ago. Right, Ma? It's so long ago. so rare that I um, ink on smooth paper like this. It's kind of nice. If I ever do like a black and white thing again, I might try that.
right, here's the test of a wash. Oh, interesting texture. Can't tell if this is gonna work. It kind of worked. Yeah, PB Pop, this is the FW ink that I usually use. Thanks, Dylan. <laughs> Garbage Pail Skids. That actually sounds like a Garbage Pail character. All right, so let's try a little bit of color. Again, with the FW. interesting I think maybe if I airbrushed these with a little bit of a just put a gradient down before I started inking I think it might actually improve the texture just a little bit Thanks, Dylan. Yeah, I love this um, uh, Scarlet FW ink. It is such a, a pretty, like, orangey, like, very warm red.
I don't know what I'm trying to accomplish with this white. It just seemed like the thing to do, and now I'm sort of questioning. I don't know what this texture is supposed to be. Maybe it's like chain mail. I don't know. Do you guys hear that? 2,219? More than that. 2,919. 2,919 original art pages is what we've counted so far. But they're actually very rare and very expensive. <laughs> All right, it's already tape time. Yeah, right, Dylan? That is, it's a lot of work. I mean, I've done, like when I was working on Harrow County, I basically worked seven days a week for three and a half years. This tape did not work for shit, man. So I think this card, um, I think this FW ink works really good on these cards. <laughs> yeah, right, Dylan? I should already, I should go ahead and buy that boat. Right. Yeah, Edie, this tape did not... Well, maybe I didn't stick it down intentionally enough. Anyway, this guy's pretty cute. Let's see what we can do with these guys. Get them taped together. Try to get it on camera. I hadn't really thought too hard about what I was going to do here. The idea with these cards is that this is the same person 
they're on top of the crypt and then they turn into the graveyard glutton and tear the crypt open and eat the bones out of it. So I could do, oh, that might be kind of fun. Do like a view from inside the crypt while the glutton is like ripping it open. Not quite visualizing how this hand should work. Like if I'm picturing his right arm is just like down here. Oh, and then his other hand would be like way up here. Okay. Maybe the moon is like behind their head over here. And that's our main light source. I'm going to hit it with a little Payne's Gray. Oh, halfway transformation. 
That would be kind of fun. But that, man, that would take some design work. <laughs> oh, Max is asleep on my lap. All right, let's. I think also when I hit this with the airbrush, I think it'll help seal up some of the the tape. Hey, comic strips. <laughs> yeah, we're we're doing um, magic sketch cards from uh, from the artist proofs for some of the cards I've done. <laughs> yeah, those Hasbro Hasbro bros.
I don't know if there's been a response from DC or anyone info about that artist that supposedly used AI for a new Batman comic. No, I barely heard about that. I turn out, <laughs> I really turn off AI discussion as fast as I can, to be honest. Stuff's a bummer. <laughs> yeah, Keith, I think the people who use um, AI tend to not actually understand like how easily identifiable it is. Because I feel like people who, um, I don't know, like I can, I can usually spot AI within just a couple seconds, but... There are some that are better than others that are a lot harder to sort of sort of identify. But the people who can't identify it are the ones who are like, oh, this looks amazing. Even though it looks all like plasticky and, and awful. <laughs> Artist in quotes every time for AI. There's a really funny um, screenshot going around on Blue Sky that was like uh, about AI artists uh, talking about how... Um, no one should steal their their AI prompts because they're so like it took them so long to develop the artistic techniques of prompting the AI that like um, it should be protected and um, just honestly couldn't tell if it was a joke or not. Yeah, the purposelessness of it is a dead giveaway. There really needs to be, like, you know, better art education. Because, like, I don't know, people should be able to appreciate the purpose of art other than it just being, like, a cool picture to look at or whatever. Or a product to, to sell. Like it really feels like there's a lot of people who just do not understand the value of art.
I might just finish the whole thing with my big ass brush. I saw a video the other day about how AI was essentially ruined Etsy. Yeah, Dylan, I think I probably watched that same one. It was really depressing. I mean, Etsy has been on the way out for years now, but like, um, it really feels like they have completely given up on that company. Like, the company has completely given up on their original thing. Like, they like to pretend like they haven't, but um, they do. Oh, hey, stapled spine. Oh, tomorrow is the Frankenstein comic swap. Man, maybe I should go up there. I need to go into Portland to buy tape, oddly enough. And it's kind of bumming me out that I'm going to have to drive an hour and a half to get the tape that I want. But um, I'm going to have to do it eventually. Tomorrow might be a fun time to do it. Although, then I would just spend all my money on comics. Which, you know, is a fine thing to do anyway. But maybe I need to buy food and stuff too. The only time I heard AI that worked for a job was when my aunt's work said to try it out and see if it works. I always got picked for the best one that worked. Hmm. I think I mean, the bummer about AI is that there is like a lot of good uses for it. Um, it's just none of the things that people are excited about are the good uses. Like the good use is like automating terrible, awful tasks that nobody wants to do anyway. But instead they're trying to automate the tasks that everybody wants to do. Trying to decide, I think I'm going to do the sky a color, but I'm not sure what color. Tempted to just do red, but a green might match the card better. I don't know, this is sort of a greeny brown, or even just like a super warm gray. Mm hmm. Hmm. Hmm.
I also have gold. I don't know if that's quite, I don't know if there's anything that's really good use of the gold here. Oh, you know what? I need to do like the inside of his mouth. Did you make some copies and test to see what works? Or would that take too much time? Uh, yeah, that'd be rough. I'd have to like scan it in and stuff. And what's the fun in that? It's all about risk taking. Oh my gosh, Dylan. Yeah, you're very lucky that they don't do daylight savings in Arizona. We did make the galaxy brain decision to um, not change our pet's feeding time. So we just, um, we're waking up an hour earlier, but our pets are getting fed an hour later. Which isn't paying huge dividends right now, but... Um, when daylight savings switches back, it's going to be huge because that's usually when they get really upset. Okay, I think I'm going to do Payne's Gray on the sky. It's not quite as exciting as I was thinking, but...
Oh man, Mark, do they not have daylight savings in in Australia either? Everything's better down under. I haven't had a chance to write yet, but Lonesome Hunters Volume 2 is great. Thanks for putting the world out there. Oh, hey, you're welcome. I am very, very happy with that story. I am very anxious to get back to it. And it should have gone a little bit darker with the airbrush, I think. I usually overdo it, and today I think I underdid it just a little bit. I hadn't really thought about this, but signing a piece like this is kind of weird. I think I'm going to sign like over the seam. See how that works.
<laughs> I just read Shiders, and I'm like, I don't, I don't even know, want to know what you guys are talking about. All right, it's tape time. Yeah, the tape worked much better this time. Oh, I think that turned out lovely. And then... <laughs> hey everybody hope hope you liked the drawing that was unintentional but worked great <laughs> So I think I think when they're done, they're gonna go live in some of these guys. But I want it to cure overnight. I think before I do that. So there's our guys. Mission accomplished. <laughs> Crumpling it up in aluminum foil is a pretty good idea. As long as it shows the hand of the artist, I think it'll still be a near mint. Yeah, the first one was pretty fun. It's just funny I did it on the, um, the little label card that they give you. So we're going to, um, the project for this weekend is for us to figure out how to get stuff like this up on my website and sell it. So, um, if you're a Magic the Gathering fan, you'll be able to order, uh, my, um, artist proofs. I couldn't remember what they're called. Um, you should be on the lookout, Keith. Um, I'll send you a tracking number. I... We tried using stamps.com for the first time, and uh, it was very confusing and took us for friggin' ever. But everything should be in the system now, but it's on its way. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Dylan. Okay, everybody, I think that'll do it for tonight. I um, hope you all have fun plans for the weekend and um, are going to have a great week next week. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Comic Show. Slam that like button. Thanks, Kelly. It's good to see you. All right, everybody, have a good weekend. Don't forget to tell the people you love how much you love them. And I love all y'all. See you later. <laughs>